So, nah, you got you definitely got some presence though. You know what I'm saying? Like I could tell <laughs> you're the type of dude if you walk in the room, everybody's be like, oh shoot. It's very hard to miss the fridge with legs. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Meme Lord Monday. I'm your host, Matt, your Meme Lord for the Lord. And on this podcast, I like to talk about Christian life in a lighthearted way. And I'm, I also interview some Christian creators every once in a while. And this episode, I interview my newfound friend, the Lord's Giant. I found this guy on Instagram and it was just, he was pulling out a gun. <laughs> this guy, I love him. He really is just such a breath of fresh air to the Christian creator environment. And on this episode, I really just got to know him and his stances and just really what an amazing person he is. And we talked a lot about just the state of Christian content, really. Uh, just how cringe a lot of stuff can be and just honestly, just unbiblical. And that's another reason why I really like him is because he centers a lot of what he talks about just on the Bible and being accurate to the Bible. So I know you guys are going to really enjoy this conversation. We had a ton of fun. We just laughed so much. And I hope you enjoy it. I'm here with the Lord's giant. That's right. That's right. And, uh, the Lord's giant. Like I mentioned, like he just caught my eye because he's just killing it on, on social media. And uh, I just love that when people come out the gate swinging and they're just just trashing the competition. Um, <laughs> and I well, I mean that in the best possible way, because I feel like a lot of your content tackles a lot of the inauthentic Christianity. You know what I mean? Like the cringe out there. And I hate yeah. that stuff. I've been creating online for about a decade and I've seen it all. Like I've seen the dudes that are like, click on this. And then, you know, the devil doesn't want you to see this. And mm -hmm. it's just like, dude. <laughs> dude, nothing genuinely makes my blood boil more. Right. Then whenever you are scrolling and someone's like, do you love God? And I'm like, dude, I want to, if I could, if I could, I'd, I'd repent afterwards. But dude, I would lay you clean out. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> anybody that dares to do that stuff like uh and it just i saw a meme the other day and it was so accurate it's just like those old like mid-2000 facebook posts mm -hmm. it was like like for god comment for the devil or whatever it was and it's like it's just modern day dudes doing that and the reason that they do it is because it works yeah and it's the fact that it works that bums me out so much sometimes because I'd love if, like, if I went in the comments of those, not because I want ill for those people, but I'd love if I went in the comments and people were like, hey, man, this just isn't the thing to do. And you can find those comments, but it's always the top comments with the most interaction and everything is like, oh, my gosh, I felt this and this is so wonderful. <sighs> yeah, dude, that's why I have to I have to make like a parody one occasionally where it's just like, stop if you love God. And it's yeah. like, what happens then? What if I don't? And it's always so so dramatic and it bums me out dude big nick he's exactly what you're saying like he's always fear-mongering like all of his mm -hmm. content is like oh oh no the nephilim oh oh no the eclipse oh and it's like you see this all over youtube you see this all, all over instagram and tiktok and the comments are more than his content the comments are what really like breaks my heart I'm like these dudes yeah. are like oh no it, you know the the comments fall hook line and sinker for this crap um yep. and it makes me think and i've made content like this before i'm just like do you guys like have any joy do you guys have any peace you know what i mean yeah. do you have any like security in the lord if you fall for this type of stuff well i think there is something to be said about the person who will be tricked by that stuff mm. right because we can be we can be frustrated with someone like a big nick or other people like that that just uh there's another guy on tiktok named like john truth and he does a very similar thing. He's someone that I see his stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh. But we can be frustrated with those people. But to a degree, it is on each one of us right. to know that they're not telling the truth. So, it, yeah, it bums me out a lot because it's the same thing of like some people's only exposure to, to scripture is whenever they go to church on Sunday. Yeah. And it's like that was never meant to be the point. So anything that their pastor says, they're like, well, there we go. A hundred percent. That's it. And it's the same thing now because a lot of people go to church less and less and they get their church, they get their teaching, their preaching online. 
And they think that that's what that is to a degree. I think that's what part of it is, is that they see this person, they have a cross in their bio, they must be a good Christian. Yeah. So let me just listen to whatever they say. And yeah, it's a bummer. And specifically with stuff like the eclipse, it bums me out because watching the eclipse and, and being outside and experiencing it, what a beautiful work of God. What a beautiful work of his majesty that can be his creation. For someone to take that, a moment whenever we could just go, man, look at this incredible universe that God created and that he allowed us to be a part of. To take that and then go like, no, it's this thing that I'm going to use for fear mongering. And it's like, how dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you take a part of the creation of God and use it for your means? And that means be this negative thing. Like... Oh man, it's frustrating. As much as I'd like to think it's a it's a righteous anger that it brings about within me, I know to a degree it's not because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to get the swinging too, bro. I totally feel that. You don't have to tell your whole testimony, but I'm curious, like, what brought you to the place that you're at right now? I think kind of like a lot of people, I was raised vaguely Christian, mm. and then you know what I mean. Like we're like, yeah, we believe in God anyway. Don't really have a home church, none of that. Sixth grade, I get invited to a lock-in. And I go and I, and whenever I went there, it was the first time that I really experienced like just genuinely nice, loving Christians. Mm. And from that, I was like, we're going to this church. So I kind of, the sixth grade me just forced my family to go. And then in like 2018, I, I didn't have a job. I was just living with my parents and I was just, you know, you go on Indeed or whatever, you go apply, apply, apply. And I wasn't getting any callbacks. And then one day I'm in the restroom and I get a call back from the church. So the, ch the church that I attend, the church that I've attended si since sixth grade, they have schools associated with them. And they those schools have before and after school care programs. Mm -hmm. So I get a call from one of those directors and they're like, hey, you applied for a teacher position. And I was like, sure, I did. Sure, whatever you say. <laughs> I was just, I was clicking whatever I could. So I go in, they, they really needed teachers. They hire me almost immediately. And in dealing with these kids, because I ended up having like a third graders in dealing with these kids, I was like, man, I should really know I should have good answers for whatever questions they ask, because people often think that like, well, you know, like a lot of people do to whatever degree kids are dumb. They're not going to ask real questions. So you don't have to have real answers. You can just go, well, God is good. Okay, let's go on, sweetie. And it's like, no, whenever you actually interact with children, they're just little people. They're little people that know less than you. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all it is. So that was kind of part of the thing where I was like, man, I need to take this more seriously. So I went online and somebody who to this day, I think is probably the, the, the main teacher that has helped me on so much is Mike Winger. Mm -hmm. And Mike Winger is wonderful on YouTube. And he's wonderful for many reasons. And one of those reasons is that he just has a, a vast amount of videos on every subject. So I just started ingesting that stuff and I started reading my Bible more than I ever had before. And I just, I realized the importance in dealing with these kids in like appreciating God and his word. And, and through like other difficulties and experiences in my life, I was like, man, I, I know, I know that there is this God that loves me. And if I love him, I should act like it. Like people often ask me like, oh, how do I, how do I pursue a relationship with God? And it's like, how would you pursue a relationship with anyone? Mm. Like you make them a priority. Right. You do the things that you know you should. And one of the things with God is that you should know his word because it's his living word and you can go to it for so much and you should pray. So I, I was just, I was just doing those things more than I ever had before. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, because like I've noticed you do have a kind of um, mm -hmm. low key apologetic vibe. And I really yeah. appreciate that because that that actually creates better, more solid content for people. Because mm. I think what happens is you get these guys who are on fire for God and they kind of like approach it from this super fundamentalist approach where it's like, well, the Bible says this, so I have to do this. But they don't have like a full fleshing out of the word of God. They don't have a full right. like contextual understanding of the Bible and what it is to be a Christian in today's age. And so that's why yeah. I think they do that stuff. Um, so yeah. when I see somebody who's creating with with the self-awareness that you have, that it's like, listen, guys, listen, this is what the Bible says. <laughs> Stop acting like you're not like, you know, what I mean, act like Christians, please. 
Yeah. And it's yes. it's a shame that we have to do that as Christians to kind of like validate what we believe. But it, I mean, it's a, it's the day and age that we're in. So, uh, like I said, yeah. one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I appreciate you. Thank you. A lot of Christian creators do understand that social media is a type of mission field because there's so much lack of awareness and understanding of what the Bible says, of what Christianity is. And one of the reasons I really love Lord to Giant is because, as I mentioned, his content is apologetic in nature. And when you create in a way that helps describe Christianity and the Bible in a way that's easily consumable, that's when people truly start to come to the Lord and truly start to understand Christianity. And here we talk a little bit about some of the testimonies that he's received as a result of that. For whatever reason, as vague as it sounds, I've always had this, this thing on my heart to help. Like, just help, to help mm. people however you can. And I think that was really applicable whenever I was, you know, before and after school teacher. And it's applicable now and in a way that I never thought that it really would be. Just just seeing how some people in what I really think of as just like my dumb guy videos, how they'll be like, man, you don't know what this has done for me. Mm. And knowing and, and seeing in my own life, like, God can use anything and anyone. And I mean, you know, we know from his word, he will literally use a donkey and here's the modern day donkey. Like he, <laughs> will, just, he will use anything. And, um, and it's funny that you like, you said that my videos have like a low key apologetics vibe. I am always occasionally I'll, I'll like ask myself, I don't know what I am like, because people are either like, well, you're a Christian influencer or you're an apologist or you're a pastor or a preacher. And you have to, you have to be one of those. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. And I'm, I'm okay with settling kind of into the like dumb guy apologist <laughs> and, and not to be like too no. self degrading, but just like, there are so many questions that you don't have to have 10 degrees to know the answer to. Right. And you, if you just put the time in, if you just do the thing, and I think that's one of the things that I, I like to be for people is like, you can just learn this. Mm -hmm. Like so often people will be like, where, where do you get your Bible knowledge? And I'm like, the Bible, <laughs> a good teacher on yeah. YouTube and Google, yeah. like you can just find these answers. And I think a lot of the time, especially depending on people's um, church culture, they're not encouraged to find the answers. Mm -hmm. They're encouraged to like, okay, go to your pastor, or go to this person, whatever they say, that's what it is. And it's like, you can listen to them and maybe that, maybe what they have to say is a hundred percent the truth, but also it's okay to do your own research. Yeah. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay. I think there, there's a, there's a healthy doubt. I think there's like a healthy thing to be like, I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know about this. So let me see what the, what the real answer is. I vibe with that, bro. Cause like, so I work full time with an apologist myself. I work with a guy named uh, Mike, Michael Jones from Inspiring Philosophy. And so we oh. do lots of apologetic stuff. So I, when I hear your arguments, I'm like, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Finally, you know, because it's so rare to see a Christian creator who's not, who's not posturing themselves as, you know, what the five, five principles from the Bible and how to dispel demons, you know, like, bro, oh shut my. up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're you're just being a regular Christian dude, but you have solid argumentation. You have solid biblical understanding. So come on, let's go. <laughs> I get so hyped when I see well, that type of stuff personally. Well, and even with you bringing up like the demon thing, I'm certainly not a cessationist, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think certain things are still allowed, and I think well, sir, allowed. I think certain gifts are still given, and I think certain things still happen. And one of those things is I do think that there are still like demonic possessions. I do think that demons still can influence people and affect people. I just don't think like a lot of these online influencers do that every single thing that you don't like is because it has demons in it. Exactly. Like, dude, it blows my mind whenever I see people, and I think you've probably seen like one or two of my videos where people will be like, man, if you have a sip of alcohol, you're letting demons in. And it's like, that's wild. Show me the verse. Insanity. Like, like actual, <laughs> like actually like condemning the Lord's Supper. Like you guys, <laughs> you guys it's are so wild. Goofy. Oh my gosh, dude. Like the, there was this, you know, I'm sure a very nice young woman whose video <laughs> I stitched the other day on Instagram yeah. who was like, so tattoos are a sign of demonic possession I saw and this. it's like dude and the verse she quotes 
said nothing about tattoos. Right. It was in either Mark or Matthew, I forget because I have a terrible memory, but it was where the guy is up on a rock cliff scratching himself with rocks. And I remember I read it and I was like, surely she must be thinking of a different verse because this is nothing. This is nothing in even relation to this. Like, and it is one of those things that I think in the same way that, you know, a modern day thing is like, everything is like racist or sexist or it's homophobic or it's this thing or that or the other. It's like, if we just throw that on everything, those words lose their value. Mm-hmm. They lose they lose the weight behind them. And I think it is the same thing. And to a degree, I mean, it's a wonderful tool of the enemy. It's to think that everything is demons. Everything is the devil. Mm-hmm. Rather than remembering, it's like, no, but also like we can just do bad stuff. And also, even if we don't do bad stuff, you can just disagree with the thing that somebody thinks. Right. Because a lot of the time it's that. It's like, well, I don't like that they watch that show and it's because that show has demons in it. Does it? Sarah, please show me how. Show me the evidence you have of the demons yep. because you don't have it. You just don't like it. Before we dig any deeper, though, I do have a really extremely serious question for you. How okay, for sure. tall are you? <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> how giant are you for real, though? Uh, I mean, I'm not, I hate to, you know, let anybody down that's watching this. I'm not that giant. I'm <laughs> like 6'3. Bro, that's, that's, so... pretty, that's pretty big, bro. I'm not well, 6'3. Like, oh... <laughs> I've told people that and they're like, oh, I thought you were tall. And I'm like, what? okay, sorry. Like, I'm not literally Goliath, but yeah, like 6'3. No, nah, so you got, that's... you definitely got some presence though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could tell <laughs> you're the type of dude if you walk in the room, everybody's be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Uh, it's very hard it's very hard to miss the fridge with legs <laughs> if you Bro's don't got... see me it's because you're maybe not in the room <laughs> he's got that power yeah i mean because like you can tell like i said i've been creating forever and you can kind of like roughly tell how big somebody is on camera um like I'm, i actually i happen to be a short king i just happen i have like big man oh. energy Congrats. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I got big man energy. I've always had big man energy. But, like, I know right. when somebody's really big, actually big. <laughs> so I was watching you. Like, the first video I saw when you whipped out that pistola, <laughs> I was like, yo, that's a big dude right there. That is a big. And then I saw your handle, and it said Lord Giant. I was like, yeah, respect. He, he got that. Yeah. My man. Being a creator can be tough because sometimes if you say the wrong word, your post will get suppressed. Or if you say something that might be a little too religious sometimes that might get mass reported and lord's giant actually experienced something like that recently so that's been fun and yes that one is now for whatever reason in a bit of red water because whenever you quote the verse where jesus says before abraham was i am that is hate speech yeah dude let's talk about that a little bit so so what led to that video i'm pretty sure it was like you responding to some muslim arguments is that what was going on it was just kind of it was just kind of responding to a very general Muslim argument. Yeah. Of just like the constant thing of like, well, Jesus never said I am God, which is an incredibly weak argument. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, if you're looking for the words I am God, period, from Jesus, he didn't say that. A hundred percent, you got us. Good job, Muslims. But you can also look at all the other places where, like and again, because I'm terrible with the exact verses, but whenever he says, Before Abraham was, I am. And every Christian, since it's been written down, has been like, well, there we go. Yeah. Like, that, that's that's one of the, you know, multiple verses. But that was it. And it was a quick, like, probably less than 10 second video where it was somebody being like, oh, Jesus never says this. And then it's just me being like, well, he said this. Yeah. And that is saying, I am God. I am the I am that spoke to Moses. And yeah, that's hate speech in whatever way that's hate speech and what's wild is like i could understand if it if it got taken down because people mass reported it it's the it's instagram doubling down yeah it's instagram being like okay go ahead and uh appeal it and we'll see you know oh no no we're just gonna do that and then also from this one thing because on this new account i didn't get any other strikes i've never had anything else removed and now they've completely restricted my account that's to the crazy. point, and I posted it the other day, where it's like, we won't show your video, or mm-hmm. we won't show your account in search, reels, explore, recommendation, none of it. Man, dude. That's, yeah. I mean, well, first, let's, let's tackle the argument real quick. I mean, I love when people say, well, you never said it. But it's like he did, though. 
<laughs> right. He kind of did because it's like back then they knew exactly what he was saying. That that'd be like me telling you, yo, just so you know, I'm the big man upstairs. You know exactly what I'm saying. You know what right. I mean? I'm not saying I'm God, like one, two, three, but I am saying literally I am God in the way that you would understand me to say that. So I, right. that's what I can't stand when people just have a really poor understanding of the, the context, really poor understanding of, of like exactly what Jesus was saying. And you, your argument was like, it's my favorite argument when you point to the ego, I, me, God, like Jesus literally saying, I am that I am. It's like, yo, I'm God, just so you know, BT dubs. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my one of my favorite arguments, like because I, I'm somebody that enjoys watching uh like debates. I enjoy mm -hmm. watching legitimate real debates. And I remember I was watching one between uh James White and I believe a Muslim man. He tried to make the counterpoint of like, oh, okay, so anytime anyone says I am in scripture, they're saying they're God. And the look on James White's <laughs> face was just like no, <laughs> because it's the context. What's wrong with you? And it's so bizarre to me because, like you said, the the context of whenever he says that, the Jews know what he's saying. Yeah, that's why they're like, "Oh, we're gonna get this guy," because I like, "How dare he?" Because they don't believe he's God, even though he literally is. But they don't believe he's God, right. so they're like, "We're gonna take care of him." And for for modern day. People to be like, well, no, he didn't mean that. It's like, I'm going to trust the people who knew their scriptures. And because they knew their scriptures so well, they should have known who they were talking to, but who knew their scriptures, how they responded. I'm going to trust that more than I trust you. Right. Yeah. It's like, if you look at their re reactions, it's like, no, 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 no. We're not stoning you because of your miracles and all the good stuff. We're stoning you because you just said you're God. And then <laughs> the, I don't know how you can read like, that and be like, no, 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 no. He didn't say he was God. Like, did you not see the part where they repeated to him the words that he said to reinforce what right. he was saying? Uh, yeah, it's it's reading comprehension, reading L L comprehension skills. <laughs> I love when people tell on themselves. It's like he doesn't say that. It's like okay, but how did you really read it though? Like, are you understanding the words that are on the page? Anyway. It's in a similar manner how there will be like the Christians that are like, well, you know, judge not, and it's like, well, how about you finish that verse? <laughs> Like, let's go like, what are you doing like you can't just put judge not and then ellipses yeah like, just finish the verse you That's like the it. you like the verse so much finish it like my goodness <laughs> but yeah like you said l comprehension skills <laughs> goodness, yes i mean there's really no nicer way to put it in my opinion it's just like okay but like is it my fault that you can't read <laughs> right <laughs> is it my fault that you can't read and you don't like what you read right? oh because man it's like man I mean, and this kind of touches on uh, some of your more like um, atheist skits that you do, because you'll do these skits yeah. where it's like you'll go back and forth with like atheist you versus Christian you. And you'll mm -hmm. you'll be extremely direct with how you have observed atheists to be like, can you, you talk about that a little bit? Well, and I think I think I do it in a fair way. Yeah. Like I, I, think I so try too. not to do it. Like so many Christians will do it where they'll give like, oh, so this is what, and then that's like their atheist voice. Mm -hmm. And I've been tempted to do that too. But I try not to because I want to not only not do that, not make just be like, oh, look at these dumb atheists. Mm -hmm. I want to give like legitimate arguments that I've heard atheists give. And a lot of the time, and it's funny because like I just saw a comment earlier where it was like, this guy always with the straw man. And it's like, that's another word. I think people don't know what a straw man is. Right. It's not a straw man to say this is an actual argument that atheists use or an actual argument that anyone uses and then to just like directly address that and to dismantle that. But yeah, I think it's important for us to actually address some of these issues that that atheists will bring up and to to not just try to like wipe them away and be like, oh, well, you're just of the world. You don't want to hit. No, like address them. And and be loved because these people are image bearers of God. They're not children of God, but they they have the same image. They're right. in the same image of the same God that created us. So we should we should interact with them as such. And in that same manner of speaking, if somebody makes it very clear, like I don't want to hear this, blah blah blah. Well, then guess what? Wipe the dust off your feet and turn away. Mm -hmm. But if someone is willing to interact with us, if there is something, if there is something within them that even if it's negative they're still interacting. I think there's still that door open where it's like, yeah, but maybe you'll turn their heart around. 
Right. Maybe they haven't heard the proper scripture. Maybe they haven't heard the 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 best explanation. Not that I'm going to give the best explanation, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And um, I think that's part. I think that's part of spreading the gospel. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of being Christ-like because Christ interacted with the Pharisees. Christ sends Paul out to the Gentiles, the people who not even like the Jews who had an idea of God, the people who had no idea of God. Mm -hmm. So that that's part of what we are called to do. And yeah. Yeah. No, I I really love that. Um and I I'm glad you pointed that out that you have like an empathetic heart towards atheists because I I can see that too because there are Christians that are just completely like have no empathy towards atheists whatsoever. They just they do construct straw mans and they do uh well they will create like false dichotomies with, with within their arguments. And it's not fair and it's not Christ-like. Um, I, I appreciate what you do because like I did deconstruct back in like 2009 and I reconstructed since then. And uh, like I didn't believe in God for a few years and I like technically was an agnostic atheist for a while. And so I can mm. sympathize with a lot of the arguments that atheists will make sometimes. Um, and I, I do. I join a lot of um, TikTok lives where the atheists will be like, you know, well, God is evil or God doesn't exist. Prove me, you know. And and a lot of the arguments they'll give are honestly based off of fundamentalists' understanding of Christianity. And you can just right. feel the really poor taste in their mouth that they've had from Christians, from yep. not ex not showing any empathy, not showing any Absolutely. understanding or humanizing them or seeing the, you know, the image of God within them. So nine times out of ten when I join these lives, I just try to be kind to them and – you can really see their their walls being broken down. So I appreciate the fact that you do your best. Like I, I know I was saying that you were kind of harsh with them, but like I feel like it's more of like a very direct uh, approach that you take with them because you don't you don't misrepresent them by saying, "Well, you just you're, you're just hard hearted. And you don't want to understand." Like some Christians do, you know. Well, you're yeah. not trying hard enough. Um, that's not always the case because there are some that are genuinely right. trying. But you know, you you tackle that in your own way. And and uh, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, well, I think, and that's one of the ways that I, I think that the, a lot of Christians have really let down the people who have legitimate, quote unquote, church hurt, mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't think, and I made a post about this the other day, I don't think church hurt is like the thing that we make it out to be. The, the church hurts nobody. People do. Mm -hmm. Specific churches can. And we should treat that like the real thing that it is. Like, we can't be... You know, there's this stereotypical thing like where if a cop does something bad, all the other cops in his precinct will be like, well, I don't I can't speak against that. That's one of the guys. That's a part of the family. And Christians act like that sometimes. And I think that's such a negative thing for Christians. I think it does nothing to help us in the eyes of unbelievers, because if we're not willing to go, no, that was wrong. That was messed up. I'm really sorry that somebody did that. Let me let me explain to you how they were not acting Christ-like, how they had this title of Christian, but they were doing nothing to really live up to that. And we have to be we have to be like uh, purposeful about that. We have to make that a point of being that there are a lot of people who have been hurt. There are a lot of people who hate God or don't believe in God, but they just hate the Christians that they've interacted with. And, you know, I, I don't think we're meant to hate anyone, but they're, they're right in a manner of speaking of these people were not meant to be trusted. Mm -hmm. These people should not have been preaching. These people should not have been teaching them. So let's be the antithesis of that. Let's not just go and, you know, kind of call back to what we were talking about earlier. There are a lot of Christians that go, well, you just got demons in you. You're just demon possessed. That's why you don't want, that's why you don't want the word. So I'm not even going to put any effort in. And it's like, what? I, I pity the judgment that you will face whenever God will cut, whenever God is judging you. And he says, what about every instance where I put these people in your path and you just brush them aside? Mm -hmm. Like, man, I, yeah, it, it just, it breaks my heart. And that's why often I'll tell people, pray for the lost. Yeah. Because they are lost. They are lost in the same way that you and I were lost at one point. And if we know what it's like to be lost, if we know what it's like to be apart from God, how can we look at someone else who is apart from God, even if they're apart from God in a different way than you were, who cares? Look at them as the same thing that you were. Look at them again as the lost sheep that needs a shepherd. Because the sheep doesn't always want the shepherd. 
Like, I don't, I don't want to like blow people's minds. Sometimes the sheep is like, ah, like, I don't want that. <laughs> but it's still, yeah. it still needs the shepherd. Yeah. And as much as a lot of people shake their fist at God, they need him. Yeah. And I, man, it, it really warms my heart. The occasional comment I get, even whenever someone, someone isn't like, man, you completely turned my eyes to God and now I believe in him. But just whenever someone is like, you know, I appreciate that you're not like talking down to me. Yeah. That you're not making me look like a fool. And I appreciate even more whenever like I can I can make an atheist laugh with an atheist like argument video. Mm -hmm. Like I made one the other day, and again, I'm I'm a rambler. Nah, and, bro. As you've like I said, words out. This is all good. Uh I made a video the other day of like a common atheist thing, and it is very common. Yeah. Is whenever they're like, Well, I'd rather be in hell. Like I'd rather go to hell. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. Like, if, you, if that's what you're saying, well, guess what? Here's your ticket. Like, God will allow God. If you just reject him your whole life, okay, there you go. And then it's just like, wow, I guess he doesn't love me. And it's like, you are fully capable. <laughs> you are fully capable of changing your mind and, and, like, chasing after him and going after him. And just seeing people in the comments like, eh, even as an atheist, I don't like those atheists. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all of our communities have bad people in them. Yeah. And we should be able to to point them out and bring them to a higher standard. Like, man. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, I love that. Yeah. I love that because I think that shows the health of a community when you have a community that is self-aware and yep. self-critiquing. So when a community uh, like and you, honestly, you see this within Islam, like a lot of creators will say straight up misinformation, but Muslims will not address it. Like other Muslim creators will not correct it. Um, and same thing with atheist content too. Like most, like it's very rare to see an atheist correct another atheist on something because it's like they're part of the same community. But, right. you know, as Christians, it's very common to see Christians like ourselves that will be like, hey, hey, just so you know, the Bible does not say that. You know, let's refocus on Christ, blah, blah, blah. And I, yep. if anything, that is a testament to the health of our community because we're willing to address the inaccuracies, like, you know, we want to be self-refining. Uh, and so I think that's that's a really good like trait to have as a creator and as a Christian as well. So, so that's another, like I said, another reason I reached out to you. We need guys like you. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing. Okay. If you could take a minute or two just to point out some stuff that we can do to help support you and, and you know, plug it all. What, what you got going on? I think on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, I don't post on TikTok, uh, I don't post on YouTube like I should, but I want to, I want to get into posting on there more. It's all the Lord's giant. If you go onto my Instagram or TikTok and you hit my link tree, I, you know, not to do too much of a shameless plug, do it. but I, <laughs> I am uh, an affiliate with anointed beard oil company and they have some beautiful smelling beard oils mm. and uh yeah just go on there use code giant and you'll get 15 percent off and it's not like a first time purchase every time you can just use it over and over and they currently have a father's day sale going on i don't know when this is going to go up but they currently have a father's day sale going buy one get one 50 off and then on top of that you get 15 percent off dude that's 65 percent off a product dude, yep have to, see see that beer? have to get up in there <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know what? You know what I smell like this morning? I smell like they got a scent called the Ark. It is very, it's very like, a, man, like aquatic. That's the best way I can describe it, yeah. bro. Dude, and they have this, I don't want to like go off on a tangent too You're much, good. but they have a scent called the Centurion and that's got a blood orange scent. Mm. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just, let me just, let me just. It's a good smell. It's a good smell. Yes, Lord. But, uh, yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> but um and they're a they're a christian owned christian based company so love that all of that wonderful yeah man i yeah i i really appreciate the the offer to come on and i'm very glad that i did this thank you man i'm really glad you joined me too all right that's the show thank you so much for listening on the podcast or watching if you're on meme lord monday on youtube make sure to check out the lord's giant on everything he just referenced and if you want to keep this podcast going and you want to help me to do more stuff, you want me to continue to interview people, show you new creators, talk about stuff that no one else wants to talk about, but in a lighthearted and balanced way, then become a supporter of Meme Lord Monday by going to memelordmonday.supercast.com. 
and every little bit helps. Huge shout out to the people that are already supporting the podcast and also have supported me throughout the entire break that I took. You guys are amazing. Another way you can help support this podcast is by going to memesforjesus.com and getting our premium merch that we got over there. I'm wearing the Anti-Prosperity Gospel Club. It roasts the prosperity gospel. It's super comfortable. It's super awesome. I've gotten some, into some amazing conversations with people because of this really comfortable and stylish shirt, if I must say. All right, done with my shameless plugs. Thanks again for watching or listening. I love you. See you next time.